Hello everyone, today I will be talking about as the title suggests Hema Glutination Inhibition Assay. So if you have not seen my last class that is about direct Hema Glutination, please watch that. It will help you to understand this class also. So and also to understand the difference between both the techniques and what are the techniques. So I will give the link in the high button, let's take, check it. So let's first indulge into the Hema Glutination aspect. So, to understand the heme agglutination inhibition, we need to understand heme agglutination. So what is that? Here, heme agglutination reaction occurs when the red blood cells are interacted with some viruses antigen present on their envelope or the outer surface. That is heme agglutinin. This surface markers or proteins or glycoproteins, whatever it is, or antigens that directly interacts with RBC and forms a clumping or a lattice structure. So that will form a definitive, that will give you a definitive structure to identify whether it is a heme agglutination positive reaction or a heme agglutination negative reaction. So here influenza virus, and heme agglutinin, the glycoprotein which is present on the viral surface will interact with the RBC and leads to the clumping and lattice formation. That is heme agglutination process. Now we have to understand what is heme agglutination. But before that, let's first, if you put a diagnose in the lab, whether it is heme agglutination positive or negative, you need to understand what it looks like. So if a drop of blood is there, but the RBC cells are there, if there is no agglutination, it will look like a clear dot when you are observing from upside into the wells. Wells are polystyrene plates where a reaction can be performed for diagnosis. Now, there will be no agglutination means there will be simple soft matte formation will be there of the RBC. If there is lattice formation means positive agglutination. In case of positive agglutination, there will be a target solution of the RBCs which are clumped by the virus in agglutinin uh, particles. So all virus cannot have this or all virus do not possess this heme agglutinin antigen. So whichever virus contain these things will be identified through this process. Now this is heme agglutination. Now, I have drawn a simple structure of these wells side by side comparison. You have to always take a positive and a negative control. So negative control here is only the RBC cells. Now here you can see that one, two, three. These three wells shows you the agglutination or the lattice formation. But here four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These are the wells. So all from one to nine, the antibody is diluted. The serum is diluted, from the patient is diluted and given here in this 9 wells. In the 10, there is only RBC is there. Into the serum, RBC cells were added later. So after that you will observe, after the incubation period is over, you will observe this kind of reactions. Where the first 3 are positive agglutination and the 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th is negative for agglutination because the antibody Titer is so much diluted that it cannot agglutinate or the lattice cannot be formed with the antigen and the antibody. This is the normal heme agglutination process. I have seen another example, I have drawn another example so that you can understand the process because you need to understand this process to understand the inhibition. Now here RBC is given, virus is there, clumping forms, lattice formation, heme agglutination. Now in case of inhibition, what will happen? You are giving RBC, virus is there which contains the heme agglutinin and the patient serum contains the antiviral antibody. This the antibody is generated against this virus. So what will happen? This antibody will recognize this virus and bind to this virus. So in a simple well, if you add these three items, 
one by one. Of course, there is a dilution of the serum will be there. So what will happen? The concentration where the antigen antibody equalize for lattice form, it will not be a visible clumping. So antigen antibody will be reacted and the RBC will be left open, means left untouched. So no virus will interact with RBC. Because the heme agglutinin particles are bound by these antibodies. So there is no heme agglutination. So it is heme agglutination inhibition assay. Yeah. So heme agglutination inhibition assay. Here the heme agglutination process is inhibited due to the presence of antiviral antibodies present in the patient serum. Okay which is diluted into the wells. So I will draw some wells also so that you can understand in real scenario if we are going for qualitative test means whether the virus is seen agglutinating or not that time you can go for this kind of reaction and understand that whether the virus is capable of heme agglutination. But if you go for quantitation means what is the viral antibody titer present in the patient serum then you need to understand this heme agglutination inhibition assay and similarly a well will be there and the wells will contain diluted the serum should be diluted and the antigens will be given and the RBC also to maintain or to identify the antibody titer present in the serum okay now let's understand this picture now imagine this RBC virus antiviral antibody in a single well where the serum is diluted in two fold, two fold dilutions. One is to 10, one is to 20, one is to 40, 80, 160, 320, 640, 1280, likewise. So these are the wells I have taken where all these three things are given within the serum diluted form. So here you can see that up to this level means this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tube, the highest dilution where there is no heme agglutination. So there is no heme agglutination in case of 8 tube and the dilution is 1 is to 12 at t. So this will be your titer in identifying the disease, sorry, the virus, the viral. So 1 is to 12 AT is the titer for the viral antibody in the patient serum. Here the heme agglutination inhibition assay tells you that the inhibition took place in this well and this dilution. So we have not taken this other dilution. We will be taking the highest dilution which shows no heme agglutination. That is why it is heme agglutination inhibition assay. Okay. Opposite to this one which is heme agglutination assay. This is heme agglutination inhibition assay. Here in this heme agglutination assay same thing happens but we are not giving any kind of antiviral antibody there. They are only virus and the RBC is there and the sera is also there diluted. Okay, with a positive. Of course, we have to take a positive and negative control in every experiment. So I hope it is clear to you that heme express inhibition is very important in identifying the viral titer in a patient's serum or the antibody titer. Okay. So thank you. Be with me. If my classes are really helping you in your studies and it is really clearing your concept and if you really like my classes give a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe my channel by affairs